thank you for such a genuinely warm welcome. So, yeah, I'm Kyle Carraffo. I'm probably best known as an entrepreneur and investor. So if you watch uh, programs on BBC Channel 4, been on lots of those and thankfully not Crime Watch. So it's not <laughs> Crime Watch that you recognise me from, I promise. But look, I want to tell you a little bit about my journey. And that journey for me started over 15 years ago when I started working with a guy called Peter Jones. So you might have heard him. He's on Dragon's Den. I was going to say he's really tall, but everyone's tall to me. I think it's just under six foot. So, hey, Peter changed my life. And what happened was at 15, I was kicked out of school. So I wasn't particularly naughty, but I was super inquisitive and I didn't really fit into a conventional education model so i started selling chocolate and sweets cans of pop anything i could get my hands on to make a couple of pounds now the reason i did that wasn't because i thought as an entrepreneur in fact i still don't really think i am it was because by far from my x factor sob story i grew up in a one bed flat my mum slept on the sofa i slept in the bedroom and quite simply i just wanted to be able to buy the heli handsome jacket and the Rockport boots to fit in with my mates. And, and that is as simple as it was. So I remember sitting down one night and me and my mum were kind of thinking, well, what, what can we do to get these? And we were a fantastic team who, who I guess when there was a problem, we, we always tried to find a solution. So look, she was working for each other, so it's my time to step up. And my five pound a week paper round wasn't really cutting it to buy these super expensive designer jackets I wanted because I wanted to fit in with my mates. So off we went down to Asda and we buy chocolate, sweets, cans of pop and kept it super simple. I bought it for 50p, I sold it for a pound. So whatever I bought, I just doubled. And I had a little manual ledger. So we used to get home on an evening, write down what I'd sold, how much I'd sold it for. And my mum being an account, she's a stickler for making sure every penny was recorded. Now, that went really well. And actually, we sold £57,000 worth of chocolate and sweets <laughs> over three years. And I say we, because while it started with me taking a rucksack in, it ended up with three, four of my friends around the playground selling sweets and chocolates. We're like human vending machines. You know, it, it, it was brilliant. My granddad, bless him, he'd drop up an extra bag at lunch if I needed more supplies. It was honestly a machine of a business. We were the camp seen on steroids so it was going really well and like I said we'd literally sold the 50,000 pound mark which uh, was incredible and changed my life and then Jamie Oliver came along and he ruined it so if anyone remembers when Jamie Oliver brought in no sugar in schools he decided that uh, school kids shouldn't have chocolate and sweets and instead we should enjoy carrot sticks and loads of these healthy products, which, to be honest, no one actually enjoyed. But the school really embraced it and they said, look, we're bringing in a healthy eating policy. So it means no fast food, no chocolate, no vending machines, no nothing. And overnight, my dreams came true because I was the only source of all the goodies that these teenagers wanted. But that soon came crashing down because this healthy eating policy was enforced. And these teachers who used to buy chocolate and sweets from me now were chasing me to, to get, the, uh, get the stuff out of my backpack. And that went on for a couple of weeks. And essentially, I had plenty of warnings. And my warning was, if you continue to do this, we will kick you out of school. You can't do it. And I called their bluff and I thought, there's no way you'll beat out a 15-year-old just before their exams for selling some chocolate. And let me tell you now, they did. So <laughs> that was the long story short of, of those three years. But what they were were really formative for me. And I didn't do it because I even thought I was entrepreneurial or uh, had a business mindset. I purely did it because I wanted to generate some cash to be able to do the things that my friends could do. But I fell into that mindset after that. And that, that kind of, I call it the university trap. So everything come crashing down, did my exams, did all right in them fell into the university of track of if you don't go to university or you don't do your A-levels, you won't be successful because that's the mindset that you're taught from a young age. And I think school's really interesting because for me, if I said I wanted to be an astronaut, they'd say choose something realistic. If I said I want to be a business owner and grow a billion pound brand, they'd say choose something realistic. But someone is an astronaut and someone, many people have multi-million pound brands. So we tell people from day one, and our children, ultimately, that these ambitious goals aren't realistic and to be more 
you know, more uh, sense of being an accountant was what we always used to tell me, going to law, um, which sometimes I wish I had, to be fair. But anyway, you know, and I fell into that trap. And the older version of that is you need a degree to be successful to get a well-paying job. So off I went to college. If anyone knows the Midlands, I went to a place called Burton College, which is a hellhole. Sorry if anyone's from Burton. And I had to get the train there because nowhere in Tamworth would have me, unfortunately. So I got the train over there. Six weeks into that, I was fortunate enough to be on a healthy eating fast food front. So I did business studies and the business studies trip was to go and pitch a healthy eating idea for the colleges in Staffordshire. Now, all my dreams came true because I thought, well, I've been doing fast food out of my rucksack for at least the last five years, really, by that point. <laughs> so I thought I was pretty good at it. And I pitched this idea. And in all honesty, the idea was rubbish. But I pitched it with conviction and I told my story. And one of the judges was a lady called Kate. So Kate introduced me to Peter, Peter Jones. And Peter was starting something at that point called the National Enterprise Academy. And the idea was that younger people or people kind of leaving school typically either went to university, went to college, but if they wanted to start a business, they had no option. There wasn't a path for that. You either fit into this box or this box. So he eventually created something called the Peter Jones Enterprise Academy. And I was super, super delighted to be on their first course in the Midlands. And that really was the start of a business called Rappi. So we grew um, a business called Rappi, which is personalised wrapping paper, and it grew into a much bigger brand. So, you know, a, a seven figure brand, you know, fast forward two years as an 18 year old, quite literally wearing my dad's suit, you know, the multi-million turnover brand, 50 plus staff across several sites in the UK. So, you know, on the outside, I had this dream life, I had a dream car, beautiful business, great girlfriend, all these amazing holidays, you know, everything you could want or everything that people think that you could want. But inside, I was actually the most miserable person in the world. So, yeah, I worked 20 hour days, I'd get up at like 4 a.m. I worked till probably 10, head home. And that was it. So I spent no time, I did that every day of the week, I spent no time with friends, family, anything like that. I was just obsessed with growing an eight-figure business. You know, I wanted a 10 million pound business. That was it. And I, when I say obsessed, I mean obsessed with it. That that was that was that. So I really fell into that mindset of the hustle hard. You'll probably see it on Instagram. You've got to, you know, you've got to be up at 4 a.m. You've got to do your yoga, have your ice bath, meditate, and then start your day at 6 a.m. and do that all the way through. Uh, and I fell into that, right? But the reality is, it's not everyone can work that way. And I look back and I think I experienced something called burnout. So I just literally burnt out. I was tired from super long days, seven day weeks, uh, running around trying to do everything, wanting to do everything at choice, not delegating to my team. And, and, and this just kind of that hustle hard mindset. So that came to an end and that came to an end because someone asked me, you know, who are you? Like, who are you? And I was just in yourself. Well, I'm Kyle, got this business and I do this and do that. And he said, no, no, no. Who are you? Who are you as a person? So not your business, you. And in all honesty, I realised I had no hobbies. I'd lost all of my friends and even family because all I'd done was be super focused and obsessed with growing the business. Now, there's nothing wrong with that, because when you ask successful people what do you change in your life, I'm sure they've changed lots of stuff, but they wouldn't be where they are unless they've done all the hard work right. But there's a balance between doing that and completely burning out. So, you know, I was this miserable person who actually had nothing about me other than a business that I wasn't happy with. So on the 28th of December, I was age 23, decided to sell that brand. And everyone said, you won't sell, you won't sell it's your life. And to be honest with you, I didn't think I would, but I did. So six weeks later, we agreed a deal and we sold. And really, you know, that, that, that gave me an opportunity that took all of the pressure off and gave me an opportunity to actually spend some time trying to find me, find me as a person. So what I found over that year was that I'd fallen into this culture of blame, excuses and denial. So I call it, you know, being in bed. So I blame everyone else for my problems. I'd have a million excuses if someone tried to call me out. And ultimately, I deny there was a problem in the first place. So I spent all, all, all day, every day in bed, 
nothing was my fault, nothing was my problem. If I wasn't where I needed to be, that's someone else's issue. But with that, it's that culture bred through the entire team. So didn't really have a healthy business or a healthy mindset. But it's it's very much human nature, isn't it, to to fall into that trap of of blame, excuses, and denial. But what I found was taking that time out, I found this mindset tool called Living Above the Line. And what Living Above the Line is, quite simply, is uh, it's a tool which is really best remembered as either being in bed or or into success. So if you're in bed, you use blame, excuse and denial. So not you know you take no ownership. And really it breeds this this toxic relationships, these toxic environments and negative team culture. Whereas when you use the all model, which is ownership, accountability and responsibility, that's above the point of power. That's when you start taking control. And that is ultimately the bit where you know, if you say, look, I am going to do this difficult task I've been putting off for, for years. I am going to take accountability for why my business has a bad culture. And I am going to be responsible for myself and the business and my happiness. Things really started to change. So, you know, what happened was every time there was a mistake previously, we'd use blame, excuse and denial. Then there'd be another mistake and we'd use that same thing. And just go round in circles. You literally never change because you just go round. Blame, excuse, denial, mistake, problem. Blame, excuse, denial, mistake, problem. So because no one took ownership of it, and that was me included, nothing changed. Whereas when you found that it was a problem and you took ownership of that problem, you were accountable for the results and you were responsible for making that happen, you find a solution. And I'd love to share with you after some really simple tools and a really easy way to explain that other than words. Because those above the line behaviours of trust, respect, empathy, commitment, loyalty are what every person should have and what I didn't have. And that changed my life. But most importantly, it changed the business. So I sold that business and I said I was never going back into it. I didn't ever want to be in a situation of unhappiness, of doing things because I, how can I put it, I did things that, I believed other people wanted me to be. I was a person that other people expected me to be. You know, yeah, people people expected me to be that entrepreneur, that person who grew that business, that person who grew an eight-figure brand. But that wasn't me. I spent, you know, seven years of my life being disingenuous to who I am, what I was. It took a long time to find that person. But I want to tell you about the difference now. So, look, we... We started another business eventually, and over the last seven years, we've grown a, a really healthy brand, both in Embello and our wider investments. We have an amazing team that work all across the world, similar to these guys at Outside Ideas. And the best thing is, is that the the thing that we brought in was that mindset of, you know, you can't blame other people, you can't use excuses. You know, you can't deny that there's a problem. So, you know, like things that are banned are a culture of that's not that's not my job. You know, we encourage all of the team to really use statements like I will, I can and I must. And that's the difference. And I guess the short message for you guys today is that really don't use blame, excuse and denial. You need to be, you know, owning it and that ownership. It's not just in business, but that's as yourself. So, you know, who do you want to be and what do you want your business to be? Now, if you own, if you take that ownership and you're accountable and responsible, you'll make it happen. So those problems which you keep blaming on other people, which you keep denying you're there or have a million excuses for, just stop. If this morning is the time that you stop and think about that, what's making you unhappy? What's causing that problem in your business? And how can you make that change? I didn't make it change and it took me a long time to learn it and it took me to my lowest point in life. Uh, Now, I was lucky enough to learn that at a young age, but all I would say is spend an hour thinking about that. Spend an hour thinking about what's, what's causing those pain points and how could you change them? And if anyone would like a one to one, I'm always happy to chat through uh, a little bit more and share, you know, a bit more information, I guess, on on this tool and this model, which I haven't developed, but I've embraced. So while I've only got a short time this morning, hopefully that was insightful. Hopefully that was an idea about kind of life and, and business, really. So thank you very much.